Hey everyone, this is James Jesso from Adventures Through the Mind. Uh, I'm going to tell you today about an experiment I've been doing with the Stamets microdosing protocol, specifically uh, utilizing what he calls his uh, nootropic vitamin complex stacking formula uh, for epigenetic neurogenesis. This is a psilocybin-based microdosing protocol, um, and without going into microdosing, which you can find more details about in the uh, videos that are linked in the description, this one separates itself from a typical microdosing protocol because it has other agents involved to sort of amplify and reinforce the psilocybin's capacity for generating uh, or for occasioning neurogenesis, which is the creation of new neurons, um, and to help sort of solidify the neural changes that that result from microdosing psilocybin. This is done by utilizing lion's mane, which uh, is another type of mushroom where the components within it have been found to uh, increase nerve growth factor in the body, as well as help with the myelination of nervous tissue, myelin being uh, like the fatty sheath that's like an insulation that allows for um, faster connectivity. It's like shielding that, uh, that allows electrical signals to move faster through nervous tissue. And niacin, which produces a flushing in the body when you take it, it causes blood to rush into the capillaries um, of your bloodstream, which <laughs> experientially uh, makes you go beach red, <laughs> very red, or at least for most people, and get very hot and itchy, um, and then simultaneously quite cold afterwards. The consequence of this blend is, according to Stamets, to basically reinforce the neurological architecture that results from microdosing psilocybin over the long term so it basically just fundamentally changes your brain and his proposal is that it would help with all forms of neuropathy which is essentially damaged uh, nervous tissue uh, from you know different forms of brain damage to the effect of chronic stress or even just nerve damage in general Psilocybin gets into the bloodstream and it starts to make these changes in neural connections as a consequence of taking it that it manifests experientially and us engaging that experience and self-regulating ourselves through it has a consequence on our neural architecture simply because neuroplasticity states whatever you're doing, um, you get your brain gets better at doing whatever it is that you do. Um, and then with the lion's mane, that helps to establish those new neural connections and its capacity to be reinforced over the long term, wherein the niacin then pushes the, pushes the medicinal components that are in the bloodstream to the extremities uh, of the body, sort of pushing the edges, sort of expanding it into the capillary, capillaries um, to expand its medicinal reach. What you'll see here on the screen is me having uh, taken a photo of uh, Stamets presenting this protocol at the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference in Vancouver back in 2018, where he claims that it's good for creativity, cognition, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, regeneration of neurons, improving vision and auditory neurons, um, and citizenship, because of course one of the consequences of microdosing psilocybin, if it works for you, is you tend to become a, a, a more emotionally uh, well-regulated person that is capable of greater uh, degrees of um, compassion and uh, self-awareness. And so ultimately you can just conduct yourself with a little bit more, um, say, executive level um, self-regulation um, in your interpersonal relationships, which of course would work to basically being a better citizen because there are less, you know, less emotional, physical, legal consequences as a result of your behavior, or at least this is me interpreting what he means by that. What you'll also see here are his um, recommended dosing protocols based on a 70 kilogram person, uh, which is about 154 pounds. That is 0.5 milligrams of psilocybin uh, the extracted molecule, which in a psilocybin mushroom would be about 0.05 grams. It recommends lion's mane at 5 to 20 grams 
or the extracts from 50 to 200 milligrams, as well as uh, niacin or nicotinic acid, which are the same, uh, vitamin B3 for 100 to 200 milligrams. Now, I don't remember if Stamet explicitly said to take it five days on, two days off, um, although I have heard him mention that a few times and it's become casually known as the Stamets protocol, which is different than the Fatiman protocol for microdosing, which is one day on, two days off. So day one, take it. Day two, day three, you don't take it. Day four, you take it again. Day four and day one are the same, um, where the Stamets protocol is five days on, two days off. So my experience with it now has been going on for just under two months, and I have been doing the five days on, two days off, mostly uh, for you know different reasons. There's been a couple days where I've I've uh, had to take a day off um, during uh, during my otherwise dosing days, and I've been taking a slightly modified um, combination in the sense that I was taking definitely more psilocybin. I was taking between 100 milligrams up to 180 milligrams over the course of the five days each day, although I found uh, around the 100 milligrams range to be best for me. Uh, as for the lion's mane, um, I was taking 500 milligrams of it throughout the course of the day. Uh, I don't want to tell you what product I was using because I don't want to promote uh, a product uh, company that, um, that I have no affiliation with, but I was taking a pretty standard low price lion's mane supplement from a very common uh, supplements company here in Canada. And for the niacin, I was actually taking 500 milligrams, which is apparently a really huge dose. And I didn't know that when I bought the niacin. I hadn't reviewed the milligrams. I just went out and I bought the supplements and uh, didn't realize that the niacin I bought was quite a strong, <laughs> quite a strong dose. Now, from what I understand with um, Stamets uh, intentions around the particular combination and dosages that he presents here is that it's looking for minimum effective dose. So this is how much you would need to take for this to have effect, but not to be an overwhelming experience to make it easier for basically the average person to take this vitamin stack. Also, I am more than 70 kilograms. I am uh, I'm actually about 80 kilograms, so taking a little bit more, I guess, is probably uh, better for me anyways. Now, before I tell you my results, I think it's good for you to know why I started to take it um, or do this stack. The, I mean, the general reason is because I'm just deeply interested in psychedelic culture and I'm a creative entrepreneur and I'm always looking for ways to better optimize my workflow and my mental and psycho, my mental health um, and my physical health and, um, and to learn and grow in the process. So something like this really, you know, kind of hit all those boxes It checked all those boxes. But what my specific intention had to do with finding new ways uh, to address my ADHD and to see what it might be able to offer insofar as the consequences of having had four uh, concussions over the course of my life, which I do believe are associated with my ADHD because it is a traumatic brain injury. And I mean, there's more to it. ADHD is definitely something that arises as a consequence of cortical development early in life, which is related to, of course, genetic predetermining factors, as well as the uh, sort of environmental factors of early childhood environment and how certain behaviors are enforced or reinforced defenses are you know, engaged or, or, or we feel safe or whatever it is, um, that ADHD is also a, a, a consequence of, uh, you know, a developmental process in the brain that is resulting from a combination of genetic factors and social environmental factors from early in life. But also my ADHD symptoms have gotten progressively worse after each concussion. So those are the reasons that I went in. Um, I wanted to see if I could get off uh, taking methylphenidate, which I was taking fairly regularly in order to sustain focus because otherwise I just get lost and then I get you know, lost. I, I can't task switch very well or commit to anything very well throughout the day. And then if I don't do that, I get into this vicious cycle of uh, sort of like seeking a quick dopamine high, which is usually things like Facebook or social media or miscellaneous other things that are not on task to my larger 
workflow or my larger professional goals or creative goals and then I start to feel ashamed of myself which then generates more stress which then hinders my ability to focus and it just spirals out and I end up eating poorly which then further in, you know damages my brain so there's like a there's a vicious cycle that comes about once that sort of starts in can usually last for a couple days and methylphenidate has been very helpful in addressing that so I was also hoping to see uh, or I was curious to see if this stacking protocol could replace the methylphenidate and if so um, will it have a long-term effect wherein I will no longer need to be taking the stacking protocol in order to have the positive behavioral or engage the positive behavioral changes um, that I was able to manifest while on the nutrition <laughs> the, uh, nootropic stack so the results um well early on i got very excited about it and i was euphoric almost hypomanic i was like this is it like this is this is the way this is the ticket i felt great for two or three days just you know went completely off the methylphenidate and i was just yeah i was just killing it i was feeling i was feeling really amazing that lasted the whole first week it lasted the two days off well the first week was three days on it lasted the three days on it lasted the two days off but then things got a little bit more complicated um, as the following Monday despite taking the dose I actually didn't feel good at all I actually felt very worn out um, what's interesting is I learned something really valuable about that so this goes into what I notice now after a few months is that I am more emotionally stable. Um, I'm generally happier. My emotional self-regulation is better. My ability to co-regulate with others, to feel safe and present in making face-to-face uh, -face, um, eye contact with people and to be really present with them is better. My focus is much better um, to be able to stay on task with things over the long term, to da task switch effectively. But, I mean, life still sucks sometimes, you know? There are still days where I feel uh, emotionally distraught, where I feel exhausted. Um, a lot of the emotional tendencies, like the desires for, like lethargic desires, or, um, or things that would make me, you know, just like not wanna work towards things, or the little stories in my head that tell me it's a good idea to check Facebook before breakfast. I mean, these types of things, they're all still there although they have less impact than they had before in the sense that when they arise it seems as though i have a greater capacity to just remain self-compassionate and caring and to derive some type of personal insight from that experience rather than just going into this vicious cycle that i i said earlier so although these things still arise they don't seem to impact me as long so it might be just a few hours or a day rather than two or three days another interesting correlation um, that i found curious is that after a few days after about a week of doing this a uh, week and a half maybe i just had so much more energy and i i suspect it's because you know i really just wasn't feeling particularly over i, I was feeling like generally more energetic and so those vicious cycles weren't happening. I wasn't struggling against my defenses. I wasn't struggling against the consequence of, you know, whatever's going on psychologically that causes these, 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 um, deeply taxing emotional processes. Um, and so I just had extra energy. I started exercising, which it's been pretty hard for me to hold a regular exercise protocol, actually. Um, and I just started exercising enthusiastically. I just had the motivation. And then that motivation mixed with the self-regulation to then also become discipline. And now I've actually been exercising regularly. Is that a result of taking this microdosing protocol? I, I don't know, but it definitely seemed to be, some, it definitely was something that happened and something that I think further contributed to the positive effects. Now, there's a couple other things that I found a bit interesting um, is that going into the end of December, 
um, just around solstice time, December 21st, which here in Canada are some pretty short days and some really long nights. I mean, there were some nights where I'd go outside at 5.30 p.m. and it was strictly, it was nighttime. And I'd get up at 8 or 9 a.m. and it was still nighttime. So it was like very, very short days, which can be very difficult on the psychology. And even while taking this microdosing protocol, I was feeling you know, kind of sad, lazy, tired, not self degrading which I have normally, and not broken. And I went back into my journals to take a look over the last few years, and it appears as though I've had some sort of mental health crisis every year around that time for as far back as I've been journaling, except for this year. And there are several differences in my life. I'm more mature. I am generally happier, more psychologically, emotionally stable. I have a greater um, social support system. I have a better living environment. I have a very stable living environment. Anyways, these are all factors. But outside of those factors, this microdosing thing is also there. And so I suspect or I wonder if that also contributed to, you know, no, it didn't make me feel amazingly good, but it prevented me from getting into a mental health crisis um, or a depressive crisis, which was the pattern throughout the course of um, the last few years around this time. So all in all, the experience has been very good. Um, however, there are some caveats. Um, so the caveats are I've also been taking omega-3 oils. That might be um, supporting the process. Uh, omega-3 is, you know, positive uh, for the brain, for your brain health, and thus your psychological and emotional health as well. Um, and I'm not really sure if I'm able to adequately differentiate between what is the effect of the psilocybin, what is the effect of the lion's mane, and what is the effect of the of the niacin. I haven't really taken lion's mane before. I mean, I, I did some time ago, actually, a few years ago, and I found it gave me anxiety while I was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. But otherwise, I don't really know what the lion's mane's impact is on my brain health, nor have I ever taken niacin before. And I'm unable to differentiate basically which one's having a positive effect. Maybe all of them are. And maybe all of them are because all of them are good for me or because they're working synergistically. But, I, you know, I can't tell for sure. Also, I have a beautiful relationship with cannabis, and I use it most nights um, as a way to unwind and get a good sleep. Um, and I also use it recreationally, too, because it makes music <laughs> sound better and movies more interesting and conversations uh, more engaging, um, at least up to a certain dose level. Um, so that could be contributing to possibly a limiting effect um, on the microdosing stacks sort of uh, tendencies to create sort of enthusiasm or, or, or sort of high energy states. And the other thing is that it's kind of hard for me to be able to assess myself, if that makes sense. Like it's hard for me to to subjectively rate my experiences and be able to compare them over the long term and to make really accurate claims about things because we are all and myself included have a tendency to not be able to see ourselves accurately a lot of the time so exactly how much different i am or i feel now is kind of tough for me to tell um, without having done some sort of series of metrics or, you know, a battery of tests or something um, at, you know, my basal state before I started this whole thing. Um, and to have had, you know, people in the community that I could ask, hey, can you watch my behavior for the next few weeks? Um, and then can you notice my behavior over the next few weeks and getting reports? This is what good science is. So I can't really say for sure. Yes, I feel better mostly, but could I can be convincing myself of that? Could it all be placebo? I don't know. Maybe I only think that I'm feeling better, but I feel about the same. And the fact that I think that I'm feeling better enables me a greater sort of, uh, you know, a, a stronger psychological, emotional platform to deal with the struggles that arise. I, I don't know. So there's a lot of factors here. So my subjective reports maybe aren't as accurate as uh, to what is actually happening neurologically um, at all, really. So Another factor to consider is that I wasn't really going in with any like strongly defined 
neuropathy. Like I wasn't going in with severe memory loss or Alzheimer's or dementia or like nerve pain or hearing loss or eyesight loss. I wasn't going in for any of that. And so the things that I am rating on the increase or decrease in quality of are things that already exist on quite a subtle um, a subtle spectrum. So again, it's kind of hard to really accurately rate what the true objective benefits are. The other factor that I think would be important to consider is that I haven't really taken a break yet. Um, and the real test, I think, of how well these long-term effects will hold, if there are long-term effects, I think will come up when I stop doing this. Now, if I stop doing this and the, you know, I just revert back to my original state, that might suggest a couple things. One, it might suggest that it didn't actually make any long-term changes in the brain. Um, Although I, I suspected it would because neuroplasticity is a very real thing. Um, but if I revert back to the state, it would suggest that no long-term, you know, lasting changes were made as a consequence of this protocol. It could also suggest that the, the superficiality of this protocol, of the microdosing protocol, which is to say sort of close to the surface. There's not a, like a lot of deep sub, like deep, deep excavation of the subconscious mind and trauma processing happening here, the lack or the abundance, <laughs> its superficial nature is not enabling me to appropriately repattern deep psychological tendencies that are contributing to my challenges inside of my, my daily life with motivation and self-regulation. And so because of that, when I'm no longer supporting myself neurologically, those patterns will ultimately just reestablish themselves and I'll just go back to the way that I was before the microdosing protocol. These things have yet to be seen. I did take about four days off at one point rather than two. And by the end of the fourth day, I was feeling kind of burnt out actually and not very good. But this could have just been a consequence of it being around Christmas time and things were kind of like beautiful, but also emotionally complex and a lot of extroversion, a lot more extroversion than I'm used to. And then extroversion mixed with loneliness. And it's just like, a, you know, it was it was a complex time. So that could have contributed to it as well. Either way, there are a lot of factors to consider about why this microdosing protocol could have been good. Um, it feels good, but why it might not be as good as I think it is. Um, but all in all, I've had a very positive experience with it. Uh, and I think I'm going to continue it um, for a little while. I'm taking a break right away here for about a week and a half, and it'll include jet lag. <laughs> so we'll see We'll see how that goes. And also I'll be unable to get a rich assessment given the jet lag. Um, but uh, but I'm going to take a break from it and assess that in a moment. But I would say so far I've found this to be a really positive experience for me, um, for my mental health, my creativity, um, my focusing or attention behaviors, uh, my memory, and even my relationships have all been, as far as I can tell from my subjective rating, positively influenced. Um, by this experience uh, or by this by this protocol. So it's been a month since I recorded the video that you're watching, not this one, but everything else. And uh, I went away to England uh, shortly after that to give a presentation um, at, a, uh, at a restaurant. And uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the the consequences of the microdosing did stick around actually quite significantly. Even with the jet lag considered, although I, I, I used a variety of techniques to help with my jet lag and surprisingly enough, a homeopathic medication, which worked even though I don't believe in homeopathy. Um, and so that went well. I got back and if you've been watching or listening to the podcast, you probably saw in the last episode I mentioned that I was going to be taking a little break. I mean, it's, it's more like an active break, I'm taking a break from the podcast so I can focus on getting some other things tied up. Uh, including getting this video out to you guys, and um, and I was yeah, it was feeling all good. However, I did sort of hit a snag, and um, I ha I I think I I did the microdosing protocol like three or four times um, after getting back, uh, 
and that was at the beginning of January. It is now uh, the end of January. And for the most part, I, I, st I stopped taking it. I felt fine, but I kind of noticed my my emotions sort of dropping off. Like my my just general feeling state, my well-being was kind of lower and lower. And again, it, it really has a lot to do with the weather, I admit. Like the sun is obviously shining now. You're watching this video. But uh, yeah, it was it's super cold and was really, really cold. And so I keep that into consideration, but I started taking the microdosing again after um, after my my mental health sort of started to decline, and it made no difference, uh, it made no difference at all for the days that I was taking it. I still just felt the exact same. I was just more supplely aware, like it, it didn't have that same oomph that it did previously. This could just be because my, you know, my neurochemistry has, for the most part, maybe readapted or reacclimatized to like a, a more stable state. So doing the microdosing isn't creating a, a like a really large impact. Um, but so I stopped again, uh, and then I started again, and and it had a positive impact. So I'm so, at this point, I I I would say that. I'm still not taking the methylphenidate, and I don't need to, even though some days aren't as great as others, and my focus hasn't been really like, hurrah, um, on every day, which was a part of the issue, obviously, the ADHD, my emotional self-regulation is still good, even when things aren't okay. I feel like, I feel okay with not being okay, which I, I didn't before. So again, I, even after, you know, it not working, as like an immediate, you know, solution to the problem of not being focused and enthusiastic. I still look back now, um, since whatever, three and a half months of exploring it. And all in all, all the caveats aside that I mentioned just before this part of the video, I really think it's been an incredibly positive uh, experience for me and has had an incredibly positive impact on uh, on my quality of life. And the exercise has continued, which is cool. Like the exercise sort of regimen just kind of, I guess, has become a part of my identity or something, but, uh, or my, my behaviors, it's, it's habituated. And, um, but yeah, so I feel, I feel generally much better. So this is my like, you know, after, after a break check-in and, and I still, although it wasn't a consistent linear growth of well-being, um, it had some dips and what looked like, uh, you know, what turned out to be sort of retrograde, um, all in all, it's been incredibly positive. If you are listening and you have tried it, I'd love for you to comment um, your experiences either on YouTube or over on the At Mind Podcast uh, Reddit uh, subreddit, where hopefully there will be a nice, uh, you know, engaging discussion about the possibilities of of this stack um, and uh, and why it is that you took it and what the results were. I, I am also very curious. There's not enough information on the stack on the internet just yet, although I am. I get the sense that over the next year or so, just like microdosing blew up, this stack is going to blow up and there'll be a lot of information. So it'd be good for people looking to get into it to have uh, to have some good feedback um, sort of forums, either here on YouTube or on Reddit, uh, to check in and see and learn from our experiences experimenting with it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, give it a like if you liked it. Share it with a friend if you think it's uh, meaningful for them. Uh, and please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, although of course, Patreon is sort of a contentious figure right now, and I can completely, you know, appreciate why, um, I am financially reliant on, on it at this time. And so I won't be leaving Patreon at any, at any moment until there's a, you know, well-established, uh, capacity to switch over to something else. If, that is even relevant at the time. But if you'd like to support me on Patreon or through PayPal or through crypto, uh, support links are contained in the description uh, to this video. And one final point is that if you're going to buy Lion's Mane, I bought it from the cheapest possible vendor because that's what my economic situation um, dictated. I would suggest if you're going to buy it, to buy it from Paul Stamets um, company fungi perfecti because it's an excellent product and i'm not like i have no association to this i'm just supporting paul stamets it's an excellent product um the 
company integrity is incredible and the larger work um, that is being accomplished ecologically and for mycology as a consequence of the fundings that are involved with fungi perfecti um, and Stamets work are really amazing. And so if you have the extra funds to buy the more expensive product, I would personally suggest you buy the Stamets specific product. Although if you're like me, you probably just wanna buy the best price, like the balance between quality and price that works inside of your, your, um, your economic situation. But that's the last thing. So thank you very much for watching the video and take care.